A fiery horse for the speed of light, a cloud of dust in a hearty Ohio Silver, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> Pioneers who first settled in the western United States faced danger constantly. Outlaws, hostile Indians, and the forces of nature combined to make their lives full of hardship. But in the masked rider of the plains, they had one friend and ally who was always ready to help them. It was his strength, courage, resourcefulness. Above all, his knowledge of the country, which made possible the winning of the West. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on! Indians charged down upon the tiny group of cabins clustered at the base of the foothills just where a swift mountain stream, its source in the snow-covered heights of Mount Crater, met the plains. The settlers had had warning of the attack, however, and had taken refuge in the sturdiest of their dwellings. Firing from windows and narrow slots, cutting the logs for this purpose, beat back attack after attack. The women attended to the wounded, reloaded their weapons as rapidly as they were emptied. The children, frightened and uncomprehending, huddled together for protection in the center of the single large room. But at length, a man who'd been sighting along his rifle dropped the gun, leaped to his feet. They're riding off! They've had a belly full of fighting! Folks are clearing out! Hey! They're high, Kalen, sure enough! Heading back for the hill. We showed them! How many's wounded? Plenty. Nobody bad hurt, though. Pete there's the worst. Got an arrow clean through the shoulder. Yeah, but we sure showed them we could fight, didn't we, Ma? Didn't we show them, though? Well, don't reckon they look for us to just take it laying down. Son. Who's game to chase after them redskins? Who'll ride along? We got them on the run. Now let's whip them good. I'll go. Roger, you'll do nothing of the kind. But Fritz is right, Ma. Why shouldn't we go after them? Ask Joe. But, Ma... I, I wish you wouldn't, honey. You got a wife to look after. Stay to home and save your scalp, or she won't be a wife, but oh, a widow. Oh, I don't... <laughs> Grown up and married and still bossed by petticoats, eh? <laughs> Hank there. I bet Hank will be willing to ride. Hey, Hank. Uh, sure, Fritz. You want me to, I'll go. See? <laughs> Ain't you got no mind of your own, Hank? You always have to agree with every fool notion Fritz gets. I <laughs> Shucks, Hank and me, we're pards. Ain't that so, Hank? Oh, gosh, Fred, sure. Sure, we're pards. But we'll forget about the engines if that's the way everybody feels. We can get... Hey, a... here comes a horseman. Oh, 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 oh. There's an old hole. Dog on if he ain't mad. Hey, 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 how about it? Should I unbar the door? Sure, why not? There's a dozen of us. Howdy. You've had a brush with Indians. We did? Just a second, stranger. 
What's that mask for? You running from the law? I'm not. <laughs> Just bought a mask for your own amusement, eh? That sounds real convincing. We look simple to you? I don't ask you to believe me. Well, in that case, mister, we Shut won't... Up, Fritz. Stranger, what's your business here? We ain't partial to outlaws. You want grub, pay for it, and get on. You want a place to hide, we can't help you. We're law-abiding folks. I want neither. Well, that I is... came here looking for a certain man. I don't know his name, but I have his description. This fellow here fits it. Me? Right. My handle's Fritz Jensen. What business you got with me? You've been prospecting on the east slope of Mount Crater. Well? You camped in the valley about halfway up. The Indians call it the Valley of the Great Spirit. That's so? The valley I'm speaking of has a large rock balanced just above the entrance to it. Uh-huh. I recollect it. What is this, anyhow? You give me a geography lesson or just tip me off, you know where I've been. How long has this settlement been here? We come here eight months ago. Why? Eight months. Then you're not to blame. You probably didn't realize that the valley has always been sacred to the red men of the district. To them, the rock at its entrance represents a great spirit. No Indian has ever set foot in that valley. For a white man to do so is even greater sacrilege. What is this you're trying to tell us? That we're to stay out of that valley? You will if you're wise. That's what prompted this attack. They were paying you back. They raided us because I made camp in a valley that don't even belong to them? It sounds foolish to you, naturally. It wouldn't if you understood Indians. You want to know something, stranger? Well, I think you're lying. Careful. You can't don't come be here. misled by this mask. I came here to help you. I came here as fast as I could after I'd been told by a friend what the Indians planned and why. I've told you the truth. Now you know the situation. From now on, what you do is your own responsibility. Yeah? Well, mister, I know the real reason for you coming. And you've wasted your time. Very well. Act as you please. Wait, stranger. Let him go. He ain't fooling nobody but himself. You refuse my advice, Fritz. Now learn the truth of what I told you the hard way. That sure some horse the stranger's right. He might have been right. Fritz, you're always too willing to shoot off your mouth. You don't know the masked man was lying. I'd say this is something we ought to look into. I was shooting off my mouth, was I? All right, folks, I'll tell you something. There's gold in that valley. Honest? Did you really find gold, Fritz? You bet I did. Well, gold's all well and good, but what's that got to do with the masked man's warning? Why wouldn't he want that gold for himself? Taking us for greenhorns, wouldn't he give us that story, figuring us to swallow it? Injuns, uh, I'm betting there wasn't a word of truth in the whole thing. He was masked. He must have been a crook. Fritz, you're right. If there's gold in that valley, he knows about it. And if he knows about it, he'd want it. Them redskins attacked it from plain cussedness, just like they would anywhere else. Now, look, fellas. I'll tell you what I think of that mask hombre's warning. Just this. I'm going back to the valley. I'm getting my share of that gold. If anybody wants to come along, he'll get his share, too. Now, what do you say? Gold. Honey, that beats farm and all the pieces. Rod, I wish you wouldn't go. You'd want me to stay to home? I'd rather. But, honey, gold means cash. It means I can buy you things. Maybe I can get enough to build us a real fancy house. Well, well if there's gold to be had, we might even be able to go back east for a trip in style. Just, just like we was millionaires. How would you like that? I don't want a big house or a trip east, Rod. All I want is to have you safe. <laughs> oh, Chucks, there ain't no danger. <laughs> Ma'am, you let your husband come with me and I'll send him back rich. Rich. Mention gold to a pack of men and they clean lose what sense they ever had. Do what you please. But I'm telling you this. Maybe the masked man was an outlaw. But to go again as warning without first finding out is just plain foolishness. <laughs> After the Lone Ranger had left the settlement, he rejoined Tonto. Oh, 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 Silver. Oh, boy. Oh. Well, I told them, Tonto. What them say? I doubt that they believed me. The fellow we'd heard was in the valley seemed to think I had some motive of my own for warning them. Uh, when I left, I said that from now on, they were responsible for whatever happened to them. That's right. But we can't leave it at that, Tonto. Not when there are innocent women and children who may suffer because of the foolhardiness of their menfolk. And what we do? We ride a spotted wolf's camp. Their danger... Him on warpath. He's never been a particular enemy of the whites. Him make war now. Because whites entered the valley. Perhaps we can make him see the whites don't realize the seriousness of what they've done. And it wouldn't hurt to point out that trouble in the district will mean the arrival of troops. Maybe him listen. Where's his village? Take Hill Trail. How far? Three day ride. Then come on, Tata. We can make a good start before nightfall. Uh -huh. Get him up, Scout. Oh, Silver! Oh! Wow.
While the masked man of Tonto rode for the Indian village, plans were made at the settlement for an expedition to the valley. More than a dozen men had signified their willingness to make the journey in search of gold. Provisions were laid out. Hopes were high. But the women did not echo the enthusiasm of their menfolk. Rod, are you really set to make this trip? Won't you change your mind? Now, Joan, honey, don't you worry. Everything will be all right. No use arguing with him, Joan. He's just like his pa was. The more he's in the wrong, the stubborn he gets. Just leave him be and come here and help me with these victuals. I'll help you. I don't see why you're so dead set again the trip, Mom. You know as well as I do why. Even so, I wouldn't say so much if it was anybody but Fritz Jensen put you up to it. What you got again him? He's no good, that's what. I can see it in his eyes. And don't tell me that's foolishness either, because I know what I'm talking about. Here, Joan, set this pan on the stove. Ma, are you loco? And set the table, too, if you want to, honey. No, I ain't loco. Thirty years ago, I knew a fella just like him. Had that same mean look in his eyes, he did. Tried his best to make me say yes to him, but I wouldn't. I got hitched to your paw instead. And he turned out bad? He saved his money, got to be president of the bank, a deacon in the church, and the folks all wanted him to run for Congress. But just because I was wrong that time don't mean I'm wrong again. <laughs> oh, you're the limit. You must pay more attention to what we think, Rod. If you would only... Who is it? Howdy, folks. Oh, hello. Good evening. Howdy, Fritz. Evening, Hank. Won't bother you. Me and Hank are just seeing who's going for sure tomorrow morning and who ain't. We can count on you, can't we, Rod? Well, you sure can. Fine. Glad to hear it. Fritz Jensen, you men are just acting like a bunch of dad ratted idiots. When did we come west for? Uh, to hunt for gold? We did not. We come here because it was free land to be had. And now you've gone and got everybody stirred up. Shucks, ma'am. Don't nobody have to come along don't want to. Try and make him stay to home. Don't you let Ma bother you, Fritz. She ain't near so mad as she sounds. How do you know how mad I am? <laughs> well, I won't stay to start a fight, folks. Remember, Rod, we started setting up. Come along, Hank. I'll be there. Night. <laughs> well, Hank, that's the last of them. They're all coming. Gosh, Fritz, why wouldn't they with all that gold to be had? Uh-huh. There's gold, all right. I They'll sure... They'll find it, too, Hank. But maybe they won't keep it. Huh? Huh, Fritz? What do you mean? <laughs> maybe after they've found it, something will happen so it'll all belong to us. Gosh, I don't savvy. You will, Hank. You will. But if you repeat what I just said, I'll cut your tongue off at your throat. Understand? Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure. See that you do. It was at night on the third day that the Lone Ranger and Tonto reached their destination. They drew their horses to a stop outside the circle of light cast by the campfire and looked upon a strange scene. A medicine man, outlined by the flames, stood erect in the center of the village. Around him was gathered the entire tribe. As the medicine man chanted, the tribe listened in silence. But each time as he finished, his listeners solemnly repeated his words. What is it, Tonto? Them make prayer. You understand them? Ah. Uh, them pray to great spirit. Yes. Tell great spirit, it not fault a red man that pale face go in valley. What more? Tell great spirit... Then kill Pale Face. A sacrifice? Ah. Uh, a sacrifice because whites enter the valley on Mount Crater? Ah. Uh, listen. Bad time for us to enter the village, Kimosabe. Keep bad. There's no use in waiting. Come on, Silver. Get him up. Come on, Come on boy. Curtain falls on the first act of our thrilling Lone Ranger drama. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. The Lone Ranger and Tonto, determined to prevent trouble between the whites and the red men, arrived at Spotted Wolf's village at a time when the entire tribe was gathered together to chant a prayer to the Great Spirit. At the sudden appearance of the two horsemen, the chant stopped suddenly. A warlike shout rang out and... Say, Tonto. Him got son name White Bear. Yes. Son speak pale face tongue. Good. Him come. He's a fine looking fellow. Huh. Man with mask. Why you ride here? White men not welcome in village, my father, Spotted Wolf. We come as friends, White Bear. White men not friends, my people. I am your friend. If I were not, would I have ridden into your village without protection? If you speak with straight tongue... My people not harm you. White Bear, recently the braves of your tribe attacked the white man's settlement near the hills. Uh, you attacked because one man entered the valley that you have named the Valley of the Great Spirit. Is it the red man's justice that all white men are to be held to blame for the guilt of one? What one white man do, others will do. Where did you learn to speak the language of my people so well? I am the son of great chief, man with mask. My father would have me know many things. My father sent me to a white man's school. Then you should know that the whites do not understand the ways and customs of the red men. One entered the valley that you hold sacred. He did so without realizing it would offend your people. Man with mask, the elders of my people have met in council. Yes? They have spoken these things, and they make their decision. And that? If white men again enter valley of great spirit, valley which even red men not enter... White men who do must pay for what they do. You will tell your people what I tell you? I will, White Bear. They refuse once to listen to me. Perhaps this time I can convince them. That would be well, man with mask. Come, Tonto. Uh -huh. Black through, Manicta. Get him up, Scout. Come on, Silver. Come on. Fritz Jensen had already led his party to the valley on Mount Crater and had pointed out to his companions the rich deposits of placer gold he had noticed on his earlier visit there. For two days, the men from the settlement had busied themselves panning the dust. But on the evening of the second day, Fritz called Hank to one side. What is it, Fritz? Over here a little more. Yeah, this will do. Something on your mind? Yeah, there's something on my mind. What? Look, Hank. Recollect the last night before we started here? Recollect what I told you that night? Well, I saw About sorta... these fellas that come with us getting the gold, but not keeping it? Oh, sure. I was wondering about that. What I meant, eh? Uh, yeah. You uh, noticed the blasting powder I brought along? Uh-huh. Sure, Fritz. That was in case we run into a vein of ore beside this placer dust, wasn't it? <laughs> That's what I said. Huh? What you said? Look up above there. Right above the entrance to the valley. That big rock there the mask man said the redskins thought such a heap of. Well, looks like it's just about ready to topple over, don't it? Don't let it looks fool you. That rock's there to stay. If something don't happen to it. Like a bad storm, you mean? Or a charge of blasting powder. Blasting powder? Well, what's... Wait. Wait. You're in this with me, Savvy. Oh, gosh, Fritz, we're pards, ain't we? That's what I've been banking on. Well, how would you like to have all the gold that's going to be found here just to split between the two of us? Steal it, you mean? Sure. Hmm? You got a way to do it? It'll take another three days working hard like we've been to get the last of the gold panned out. All told, there ought to be about 10,000 in the stuff. Uh, about that, I reckon. That gold will be packed on the horses. Sure. Well, Hank, what would you say if when the time come to start, I told the boys I'd lead the pack horses? What if I told them to start on ahead? Then when they got just about as far as the way out of the valley, that rock above there should happen to topple over on them. Uh, I ain't sure I get what you're driving at, Fritz. <laughs> Mentioned I had blasting powder, didn't I? Yeah, but... And of course, you... I brought along a considerable length of fuse. Long enough to light down here in the valley and set off a blast under the rock. 
You mean you're figuring to plant that powder again in the rock and set it off? Yes, sir. But, Fritz, that'd be murder. Ten thousand in gold is worth having in it. Oh, Fritz, listen, listen to me. I, I do almost anything you ask. We've always been pods. You know we have. But to kill, to kill without giving them a chance. You won't do it. Oh, I can't. That's just what you think. Thank you, listen to me. Oh, I can't. There ain't you and nobody else going to get in my way. You're welcome to share if you help. You don't help, you won't share. Oh, wait. But the night before we head back for home, I'm setting that blasting power. Oh, no, Fritz. if you open your mouth or do just one thing to spoil my scheme, I'll fix you if I have to hang for it. Meanwhile, the Lone Ranger, returning to the settlement, learned that a dozen men had entered the Forbidden Valley. He rejoined Tonto, and together they raced to the valley to warn the prospectors of their peril. Come on, Silver! We've got to reach Mount Crater before the Indians attack! Hello, Silver! Away! In the valley itself, the men had panned out the last of the gold. Plans were made to depart early in the morning, and the preceding night they went to bed early. But when all were asleep, Fritz Jensen left his blankets with powder and fuse, made his way stealthily to the huge rock overhanging the entrance of the valley. There, working swiftly, he planted the powder and departed. But no sooner had he left than a second figure emerged from the shadows. I can't let him do it. He'd kill me if I told the fellas what he schemed. But anyhow, I can change the powder without his knowing it. What? What was that? Hank. Is that you, Fritz? Is it? I never meant any harm. I... I'm not Fritz, Hank. What? Tonto saw you when you went through that patch of moonlight. Just what are you up to? I, you're masked. You're the masked man I've seen before. The following morning, the camp was astir at dawn. Gold and supplies were loaded on the horses. Saddles were cinched up. Then, when the time came for departure... Ain't you ready yet, Fritz? I'll be ready in a couple of seconds. Why don't you fellas go on ahead? Well, uh... me and Hank will catch up with you with the pack horses, won't we, Hank? Yeah, yeah, we'll catch up all right. Well, if you fellas don't mind, the rest of you ready to go? <laughs> then we'll ride on ahead. Fritz and Hank will come after. Make it fast, will you, Fritz? Sure, sure. We won't be a minute. Well, we'll see you. Come on, fellas. Get up. Get along, Hank. Come on. You still figure on going through with it, Fritz? You think I wasn't? Give me our matches. I, I... Give them to me, you hear? T- take them. Yeah, that's better. Maybe I'll give you a share after all. Stay right there. You, you're going to light the fuse now? Sure I am. Got it time, so we'll catch them just when they get beneath the rock. You shouldn't ought to do it, Fritz. You shouldn't. I, I thought when the time come, you'd change your mind. There she is. It takes a couple of minutes or so for the fuse to burn down. Then you are a killer. You're a killer after all. <laughs> now, don't go getting upset, Hank. Come on, Silver. What the hell? Coming with me, Fritz. I, I cross the saddle with you. <laughs> Hurry, old fellow. Hurry. Go. Let me down. Let Come me down. on, I, Silver. I, you set a charge of blasting powder to kill those men ahead, Fritz. Well, if they die, you die with them. Come on, boy. Come on. <laughs> It was only a matter of seconds before the great strides of silver brought the masked man and Fritz even with the party Fritz had sent on ahead. The men stared at the lone ranger in amazement when he signaled them to a halt. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, what is this? Make this fellow let me go. Make him let out of the saddle, Fritz. Uh, hey, uh, I'll walk ahead. Walk. Stand beneath that rock there. Oh, no, wait. Do I have to persuade you with lead? No, I'll get killed. I'd rather you shoot me. But don't make me What's Fritz talking about? I'll tell you. I'll tell you exactly what I learned from Hank. This fellow stayed behind with the pack horses and the gold on purpose. He fixed blasting powder beneath that rock there, so you'd be killed and the gold his. You're crazy. You can't... Wait, Rod. I'll bet the masked man knows what he's talking about. If he ain't telling the truth, what's Fritz so scared of? Fritz has been acting awful funny of late. You really think... If Fritz is willing to stand beneath that rock, it'll prove he didn't clap the powder there. But if he won't... You ain't going to get me killed. Hey, he's running back up the valley. come back here. I ain't going to be trapped. You fool. We changed the powder. You'll get killed if you go in that direction. Come back, you hear me? Come back! It's set to go off any second now, sir. Silver, old boy, we'll have to chance it. We'll have to go after him. Jump! Tonto, obeying the Lone Ranger's orders, had intercepted the Indians they knew would ride to the valley the moment they learned that it had again been invaded by whites. The explosion had scarcely died away 
when Tonto led White Bear to where the bewildered settlers sat on their mounts, staring back at the result of the tremendous blast. Here, White Bear. Man with mask. Pale face and the valley of great spirit. But the great spirit has spoken and punished White Bear. Huh? What what you mean? One man persuaded these men to follow him here. That man is dead. Killed by the valley itself. See? Look there where the side of the valley is caved in. He was punished for his crime. And now the valley is blocked so that no man, either white or red, can ever enter it again. That, that true. Forget what has happened. Let these men go. Your Manitou has made the guilty man pay. These others were guilty also. They would have been made to pay too. Manitou, very great. He also is just. These white men of your race may go in peace. Good. Manikte. Manikte, Kimosabe. I hope the day comes we meet White Bear again, Tonto. Ah. But stranger, I... I still don't savvy all that's happened. You've had a lucky escape, but it's easily explained. I told you the truth when I said the valley was sacred to the Indians. When I learned you were here, I came to persuade you to leave. But Fritz, I... Tonto and I entered the valley carefully last night because of the danger of Indians being there. We entered so carefully that we saw Fritz lay a charge of powder beneath that rock above us there. I learned the truth from Hank and changed the position of the powder so the blast would close the valley for all time. And the rest you know. So it was Fritz's own fear that killed him. He run from the blast, he figured it was going to go off, and got his like he was going to fix us. Well, all that happened was he saved us the trouble of a hanging. you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.